Hi, this is Dan Emfield from slowtwitch.com and I'm going to show you how I changed to stem in 30 minutes on this bike. You might think that that's an awful long time to change a stem, but in this particular case, this bike has the hydraulic lines running from the controls to the calipers through the stem. A lot of bikes are made that way these days and I found that it was laborious to do that whole thing, uh, unhose the bike, cut off the barb and the olive, rehose it, re-bleed it, and all of that. And so I installed a set of hydraulic quick connects that I've written about on Slow Twitch. Formula Italy makes these things, but I haven't really shown you the process of what it's like to use them. Uh, and so I'm gonna do that right now. I, this is a 110 stem. I took this off the bike. I put the 120 stem on the bike. This whole system, this is a Quintana Roo SR6, uh, Aero road bike. This is the FSA ACR stem system. This is an FSA K-Wing AGX bar. And for those of you who know, yes, it's a gravel bar uh, for reasons which I have gone into on Slow Twitch. And I won't go into now because you can read it on Slow Twitch. I have purposed a gravel bar on an Aero road bike to act as my Aero road bar. Uh, so go read about it if you want. Uh, the purpose of this video is to just show you what it actually looks like to work with this inline hydraulic quick connect for a stem change. When it comes to taping handlebars, some people like to start at the tops and end at the drops. Other people like to do it the other way around. And I am firmly in the camp of, I don't care. However, in this case, I start at the drops and end at the tops because in such cases, you need to disconnect things. It's a little bit easier to do this if you just have to unroll a little bit of handlebar tape, make your changes, and then roll it back up. There's a male and a female side to this quick connect, uh, and I've oriented it in the only way that you really can for the routing that I've chosen here. There's a little uh, spiral stainless steel elastic O-ring uh, that you pull apart uh, that allows you access to the, the connect. And then you disconnect like that. And, and you're good. And the reason that the male piece is oriented towards the frame is that I need to fish this through the handlebar. Okay, I did some disconnecting and these lines passed uh, through this hole, out this hole and into the connect. Uh, disconnected, uh, fish these lines out. Now I just have to change the stem. This is what this looks like. I'm taking off the shorter one, putting on the longer one. So out it comes here and in it goes there. And same thing here. The stem is replaced. Uh, I have not put the face plate on yet. I have fished through the first line. And my recommendation is that you hook this up before you start fishing through the other line on the other side, uh, which I do with a pick. And uh, this is where uh, science meets art. Trying to okay, I've got this side hooked up. This side is fished through, but not yet hooked up. I put the face plate back on and uh, I'm gonna show you how this connects so that uh, you can sort of Get a look inside the sausage factory. Um, it's not all as simple as it may seem after this video is edited down, uh, but it's like this. Uh, this will snap in or not. Uh, come on now, come on now. There we go, it snapped in. This is the... Um, that spiral uh, O-ring I told you about, this slides over, and this is what keeps this from disconnecting when you don't want it to, which is not a good thing if you're uh, going downhill. So it's connected. So now all I really have to do is tape it back up, adjust the handlebars where I want them, and that's it. And uh, we're good. Uh, I don't have to re-bleed. Now let's talk about some practical implications of this. As you see, 
I have these on the outside here. I think most of the time, I'm gonna have these connects inside the stem and I'm gonna shove as much slack as I can, uh, hose slack in uh, the frame and, and in the fork so that uh, in most applications, I'll take the face plate off, I pull the handlebar out and out come these things. And I've done a bike that way and it, and it works. Um, in point of fact, uh, sometimes it's hard to cram enough hose into the fork. Um, if you can't cram enough hose into the fork and you take the faceplate off and you pull the handlebar out and you don't have quite enough slack to be able to pull these connects out from inside the stem extension, then worst case is you'll have to undo the uh, caliper front caliper, it's, you get plenty of slack in the rear of the bike. There's plenty of frame to throw the more hose into. Uh, but in the front, it's been my experience, it's not quite that easy. So you may have to undo the caliper to give you these, this extra, maybe three inches of hose slack. In other words, the caliper will suck right up into this hole right here, uh, right up against it. And that'll give you plenty of slack to uh, bury these quick connects inside. Everything's tightened down, handlebars are taped back up. I had the wheels off the bike, they're now back on the bike. Uh, brakes work, uh, no re-bleeding. Uh, it's a product that's made by Formula Italy. Not the easiest product to find, but if you do find it, um, they make a set for Shimano and they make a set for SRAM. You can't mix them up, one's for mineral oil, one's for regular dot fluid. Uh, but uh, they do make them both, uh, and uh, presto, there you have it.